attorney-client privilege restriction. Well, is my well. question really was, is, is one member of the uh, commission, uh, can they hold that information from the rest of the commissioners? And, and I don't, I think that's a policy decision rather than a legal decision. <laughs> No, but I think that I want to put something on. Yeah, the I mean, to the extent that the, the commission is the client and the commission is the body. Um, you you know, see, I think that the situation that you've got here, uh, and, 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 and uh, quite rightly throwing a spotlight on it to make sure, again, that we're legal and we're not subject to challenge and having been challenged, subject to losing, is the fact that hitherto the policy was that the chairman, when I took over, um, Terry Moody would be the single conduit in most cases to attorneys well, attorney to gather information and to invoke the privilege of privileged communication between the attorneys and him. I mean, it, 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 see, I don't go along with that. Well, I'm, I'm quoting well, history. I, I don't think it's very right bad, right. No, no, very no, bad no, policy. I think you are using a, an unfortunate word. Did I? Yes, you used the word conduit, which is something which allows things to pass through somebody. And what you are describing is a situation of a blocked drain. Amen. <laughs> 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 I think we answered that. Conduit is not a word. Actually, I'll ask you a question, but you might already be wanting to cover this, so feel free if that's the answer. Um, do we have the right to go into executive session to receive legal advice? Which may go, it may go on your next question, but yes, it does. On my does. Mind. It does. Um, the, the last question that I was provided, and actually I had intended to go beyond that to answer your specific question, is can the commission go into executive session for the purpose of receiving a privileged document like a legal opinion or something else that is subject to it? And the answer is yes. Um, under 1.225F, um, it permits the commission to go into executive session by two-thirds vote. Um, executive session is defined in 1.200 subsection 6 uh, as permitted one of, the, one of the reasons to go into executive session is the discussion of any matter which would result in the disclosure of public records or the information contained therein described in subsection B of 1 to 10, which is what we had talked about before, attorney-client privilege. So to the extent that you want to go into executive session to discuss a document that is protected by the attorney-client privilege, you can do so. You just want to state for the record, as you are going into it, we are going into executive session for the purpose of discussing documents not otherwise subject to disclosure under 1 to 10 v 10, you know, all in favor say aye. Um, and you want to rather meticulously confine your executive session to the dis, you know, to the review of those those protected documents. Um, you can have the attorney there to kind of explain the protected document that they provided to you. Um, Freedom of Information has kind of acknowledged that that's permissible. Um, but you need to, in order to do so, you need to have the privileged communication, the physical document there. Um, you can't just go into executive session with your attorney unless there are pending claims, pending litigation. You're evaluating making a claim against someone, um, you know, that there's actual claims or litigation or to discuss privileged documents. You can't just go and say, I want to talk to my lawyer and I don't want anyone around, you know, unless one of those specific criteria has been met. Um, and 1231B basically codifies that, you know, unless there's a privileged document exempt from disclosure, you can't go into executive session just to get oral legal advice um, <coughs> absent claims, litigation, and, and those kinds of things. So <coughs> if we were just going to be talking about something in general, how to proceed um, in something that didn't fit within one of the other uh, bases for a legitimate executive session, you couldn't do it.
Any questions on the issue of executive session as it relates to previous communications? I don't, but I would like to ask if it, um, in reviewing all this, I had some other questions uh, off t on different topics. Is, are, we, uh, are we able to ask them? Well, it, we, we've been here an hour. We have a whole audience here have been very, very patient and haven't been yelling and screaming. They did applaud at one point. I, uh, well, here's the thing. I don't want it to go off into left field, Sean. It's well, related to the four questions. I think it's it is related to it is related to how we conduct our business. If it's so, it, how about this? I'll ask the questions. If our attorney feels they're at length, and we can either deal with it later. But um, I put some thought and some time into this. I'd like to at least to ask them, and if the response is that you'll get back to us on it, I can accept that. Is that fair? We don't know what your question is. Yet. Okay, I'm going to ask them. Um, what are the standards for recusal? Meaning, someone is seated either as a full member or as an alternate filling in for a full member. Um, because we had some confusion in January over that. Um, that's one. Number two, is there any legal requirements on seating alternates? Uh, any state statutes uh, so along those lines? Number three is, what is the role, if any, of unseated members in deliberation? And I know there was a court case that has not, I believe it has not gone to the state Supreme Court. So we're sort of in flux. That came up at our last meeting, if you recall, Martin. Yep. Um, that, I think we could, if there's any questions I'd really like an answer on, that would be one. Um, well, which was that, the unseated alternates? Or uh, the no, the situation, yeah, the unseated, I'm sorry, yes, the unseated members in deliberations. So the, the scenario, the scenario that came up was I was, not seated that night. I'm an alternate, and there was a. Uh, we ended up resolving it. There was a question about a permit that we hadn't given the same time to the fish truck that we did to the taco truck. Martin and we discussed it, saying, "Yeah, that's a fair question." But if there's any guidance on that, um, because I know with this case, I'm not really clear what can or can't be done. Um, another item that came up at I think the last meeting, when Bob was sitting in his chairman. Does an item have to be on the agenda to act on it? We had a situation where we brought some enforcement-related items up, and um, they weren't specifically on the agenda. 